in the name of allah the most merciful and the most beneficent assalamu alaikum how are you all i welcome you in pakistan international school thais virtual learning class for first year biology dear students this is lecture number 15 and we are discussing chapter number 2 that is biological molecules today's topic is regarding carbohydrates and monosaccharides let's get started okay so just take a look and the classification of carbohydrates but before that we are going to just see briefly once again about carbohydrate that we have studied that carbohydrate carbohydrates are polyhydroxy aldehyde or polyhydroxy ketone or the compounds which give on hydrolysis the derivatives of these compounds so uh, like the compounds which are having polyhydroxy like they are having many hydroxyl group as well as aldehyde group on one side and or it can be key, uh, having ketone group on one side and polyhydroxyl groups on other side okay so carbohydrates are actually if we just uh, name them uh, when we just talk about carbohydrate it means they are sugars yes they are sugars because they are sweet in taste but um, the most familiar carbohydrates they are sweeter in taste uh, actually uh, they come that come from the word greek word saccharon it means uh sweet so that saccharon means sweet so that's why it's named the sugars because sugar is also the uh, having the sweeter in taste <clears throat> okay so carbohydrates are also called saccharides <clears throat> saccharide due to uh, this greek word it going to change into the word saccharides so a polyhydroxy aldehyde a polyhydroxy ketone is supposed to be single saccharide unit so that single saccharide units or its derivatives which uh, compose more than one saccharide units all are carbohydrates so if we talk about Uh, the classification of carbohydrates so they are divided into three main groups monosaccharides oligosaccharides and polysaccharides so what are the differences between them we will see here mono means one saccharides means saccharide group like sugars so they are single saccharide units like we have discussed before um we have discussed before uh, about uh, polyhydroxy ketone or polyhydroxy aldehyde so we can uh, say that this is c c and c like a carbon and then we are having hydrogen on one side and then on the other side we are having oxygen so this is aldo group uh, like carbonyl group so this this completely forms aldehyde group so on the other side here down we are having h and here we are having oh here also we are having h here we are having oh and here we are all so having h so this is polyhydroxy polyhydroxy aldehyde okay so if 
here on place of hydrogen or all this side both are having r r like a uh, carbon chain so that can be uh, polyhydroxy ketones okay so this is the single unit okay single unit saccharide and uh, if we talk about oligosaccharide so that is 2 to what we can say 2 to 10 saccharide units this is one saccharide unit so in that we can have 2 to 10 saccharide unit number 1 then it will join with other number 2 then 3 number 4 then we will talk about in oligosaccharides inshallah then in polysaccharides we can have more than 10 saccharides uh so means more than 10 saccharides there are poly poly means many saccharides oligo uh, oligo is also uh, the word for uh, from different language in which greek language in which there is few okay so that's why 2 to 10 polysaccharide uh, saccharide units are there so if we talk about monosaccharides they are simplest uh, carbohydrates and they uh, cannot be further hydrolyzed like they cannot be further hydrolyzed means they cannot be uh, broken down okay so they have less complex structure because they are of 2 to 10 units only and uh, when they are hydrolyzed on hydrolysis they give uh, the least one the smallest one two in which two units are there and the maximum in which 10 units are there from here and they are uh, giving the least one because it is more than 10 so the least one is having the element units okay when they it is hydrolyzed so in so they are uh, monosaccharides are highly soluble in water oligosaccharides less soluble in water and then uh, generally polysaccharides are insoluble in water then we can see that monosaccharides are sweetest in taste and oligosaccharides less sweet and polysaccharides are taste less carbohydrates okay so now uh, we are going to see one by one in detail about these three types and then uh, now we are seeing here monosaccharides monosaccharides are also called true carbohydrates which are either poly hydroxyaldehyde or polyhydroxy ketones we have discussed before and the range of number of carbons in monosaccharides is 3 to 7 like in one unit like we have discussed before we are having we can have three carbons okay like this carbon then carbon and then carbon so like this it can have three to seven carbons so um, by uh, the numbers of the carbons they are having different names if we talk about classification of monosaccharides so they can be trioses if we they are having four carbons tetroses five carbons pentoses six carbons hexoses and seven carbons heptoses so all these monosaccharides except one have hydroxyl group while the other remaining carbon atoms is either the part of aldehyde or ketone group so all are having aldehyde or ketone group so its general formula is cnh2non or it can be written as c h2 or o and into the bracket we are having twice here so it uh, sorry here is n the number can be changed if here is carbon is having uh, two so it means the equal number of carbon and oxygen is there like oxygen is also two and hydrogen two twos are four so like this here if uh, carbon is a uh, three and oxygen is a uh, three so hydrogen's number is six so it is the double of that number which is in carbon or oxygen so we have discussed here on the basis of functional group monosaccharides containing aldehyde are called aldoses or which are having ketones they are called ketoses 
So they are, uh, there is a table according to that. We can see here is triosis, tetrosis, pentosis, hexosis, and heptosis. They are having different formulas. Like trios is three carbon, so six is uh, H is double. Like four carbon, H is double eight. Like five carbon, H is 10. Six carbon, so H is 12. Seven carbon, H is 14. So like that, as the number carbon is having oxygen, have the same number. So it's, uh, if they are aldoses, so they are called glycerol aldehyde. If they are having keto group in that, so they are called ketoses, and its name is dihydroxyacetone. So its function is intermediates in photosynthesis and cellular respiration. We'll see in chapter number four, inshallah, these bioenergetics um, in detail, and we will see what type of intermediates are formed uh, in uh, photosynthesis and respirations. So if we just see all these um, L doses and ketoses, so we can see most of our having photosynthesis and respiratory intermediates, as well as they are most of like um, energy uh, resources as well, sources. Okay, then we are gonna see chemical structure of monosaccharides. So monosaccharides are usually found in open chain. Uh, open chain structure in crystalline form, but when it is dissolved in water, what happened? They are converted into ring chain structure like this. Okay, so most of them which are pentoses and hexoses, mostly they form the ring like structure when they are dissolved in the water and they are called furanose and they are called pyranos. So how these structures are formed? So furanose is having, uh, is five membered ring. Five membered ring, it means in the ring, of, uh, there are four carbons. Here is carbon, here is carbon, carbon and carbon and here is O. They are connected with O. How they are connecting, we are going to see in uh, here in this topic. So in pyranose, there are um, uh, one carbon is outside and five carbon are inside. So pyranose means six membered ring, but carb in the ring there are five carbons and here in furanose ring, five membered ring, but four carbons are in the center. And this oxygen is connected with carbon number one and carbon number four here. And here it is connected with carbon number one and carbon number five here. Okay, so only aldohexoses are converted into pyranose ring, just in which their aldo group is present, they are converted into pyranose ring. So how um, ribose uh, ring is formed, we will just check this one, in which there is a five member ring, but there are, uh, well, we can say one carbon is outside. First of all, we will see this is a ribose open chain sugar in which five carbons are there. So the first one is what this is, aldo group, okay? So means aldehyde is attached with it. And what happened with this one, aldehyde, um, uh, when we dissolve in the water, so what happened? This carbon number four, this is called penultimate carbon, means the second last uh, carbon of which the hydroxyl group is attached with the carbon here like this. And this O of aldehyde group in which it is having, we can see this like this is double bond here. So this single bond is broken down and this bond, uh, this oxygen makes the bond with other carbon from carbon number one, it makes the connection with carbon number four. So by this, this uh, means ring form is uh, formed. This is called Fisher projection by, because Emil Fisher has demonstrated this structure. When we talk about the three dimensional structure of this, that is called Hever 
production projection so we can say that this oxygen comes in the center and from here oxy uh, oh1 is there and this all this all will be written like oh will be down this oil will be down and this h then uh, this ch2 and oh will be written here and then we can have this three dimensional havertz projection if we talk about the two dimensional projection is called fisher projection and three dimensional havertz projection okay so each pentose and hexose molecule in the ring exist in either alpha or beta form depending upon the position of h and oh group here okay at uh, group number uh, on the group uh, on carbon number 1 okay they can be uh, like if we just talk about the example of and glucose glucose is also hexo uh, hexose sugar like in which six carbons are there but if we just uh, take a look of havertz projection so we can see here 1 2 3 4 5 carbons are inside one out of the ring and they are connected with oxygen so if in glucose this hi uh, hydrogen is which is on carbon number 1 is upside that is called alpha glucose and if it is on the downside that is called what we can say that is called uh, beta glucose so we can say these are isomers of one another because they are having just uh, orientation uh, like they are having some changes in orientation but its formula Uh, is completely same so they uh, that is called isomers now we are going to see stereo isomers in monosaccharides if we just talk about monosaccharides we will take its uh, example glucose in glucose we will see those isomers in which h and oh groups are arranged in different pattern to the asymmetric carbons are called stereo isomers now asymmetric carbons is very important term here asymmetric carbons in chemistry they are also called chiral carbons okay chiral carbons the other name of this so these are as symmetry means same but asymmetrical carbon in which uh, like carbon is having you can say uh tetrahedral structure it means it is having uh, four uh, bonds and on four bonds all the uh, species yeah, all the molecules which are going to attach here they are all different that is called asymmetric carbon so the uh, position of h and o uh, oh on these Uh, asymmetric carbons is a chain when they are chain they are called stereo isomers so here we can say that in sugar we are having if we just talk about just straight chain c c c because this is a hexose sugar okay 1 2 3 4 5 1 uh, 5 and 1 6 so these are six this is open chain uh, glucose uh, molecule so here it is having uh, c2 c3 c4 and c5 asymmetric carbons okay um from here 2 3 4 and 5 in ring form it is 5 uh, asymmetric carbon this one also but in straight chain it is four because all are having different groups attached with them so uh, it's uh, how to count the stereo isomers it is formula is 2n so how many stereo isomers are uh, how many like um, asymmetric carbons are there we'll write here it is having if it is having Four, so it is sixteen. Uh, 
stereoisomers of glucose is there. So stereoisomers are also having uh, three different groups and antiomers and antiomers and antiomers. So in uh, an antiomers, what happened? Non superimposable mirror images are there. So they are the isomers which are stereo, they are those stereoisomers which are having non superimposable mirror images. Like, for example, this, uh, this is mirror, sorry. And um, we are having. Uh, like uh, two molecules here, like of C, of C, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So they are mirror images, but the groups which are present uh, uh, here around them, they are not superimposable. For example, CHO here, and uh, like if C double bond O here, and H here. So when we superimpose them, we just it means we just uh, keep this one and just uh, put straight uh, straight words here on that. So they are not superimposable. They are not as same as they are. So it means they are mirror mirror images, but they are not superimposable. Like if we are we are keeping our both hands on one another so our thumbs uh, will move out and all the fingers will be inside so uh, they are non superimposable so its example in n antiomers is d and l isomers of glucose you can see here d and l isomers of glucose in that what happened on this carbon atom means on uh, this penultimate this is the last second last carbon atom is called penultimate where this changing is going to uh, going on if that is on the right side this is called d glucose if a hydroxyl group is on the left side left from left this is um, l glucose so these are two examples of n antiomers so if we talk about di isomers so they are you know, having different arrangements of H and O. Actually, all are having OH and OH group arrangement, but they are having the same formula. So H and OH, yeah, hydrogen and hydroxyl groups are at more than one asymmetrical atoms. So its example is D-glucose and D-altrose. We can see here D-glucose and D-altrose. We can see at carbon number this one and carbon number two and then three and then three here. Both carbons are having the H and OH arrangement different. So it means diastereoisomers means on both of the places H and OH are changing its orientation so if we talk about epi isomers so these isomers having different arrangement haoh they are also uh, on asymmetrical carbon atoms for example d glucose and d mannose we can see here d uh, glucose this one and d uh, mannose here so we can see here Look, this, these all one, two, three, four, one, two, three, they are same, but here only on one, carbon number two, the arrangement is different. So in epimers, what happened? Only one uh, arrangement of H and OH on one carb, only one carbon atom, but in diastereoisomers on two carbon atoms, they are, uh, the positions are different. Okay, so there are other uh, tagatose and sucralose that are uh, manufactured in the laboratory, like artificial sugars are there. So they are L sugars. So, but naturally occurring sugars in the bodies are D sugars because proteins and cell receptors which are present in our body, they are, uh, they only react with particular and, uh, and, and tumors. So, um, 
like for example in our stomach they can digest right handed sugars uh, like d sugars so d sugars are very important because in our body is uh, like um, uh, uh, the proteins are or receptors are molded according to the d sugars but some are like uh, right handed in enzymes they are, can also not be fit so for the left handed substrate uh, sweeteners enzymes must be left handed so in our body most of the um, uh, sugars or most of the enzymes are uh, like right handed they are uh, d in structure and they are specified for d sugars okay dear students i hope you understood uh, this all um, very interesting that is uh, monosaccharides classification and um, uh, like all the stuff which uh, like how d and l is important in our uh, body as well we will Uh, continue the topic oligosaccharides in inshallah in the next lecture wish you all the best allah